The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. A genealogy of Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah, Tamar being their mother. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron, the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Aminadab. Aminadab, the father of Nashon. Nashon, the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz, Rehab being his mother. Boaz was the father of Obed, Ruth being his mother. Obed was the father of Jesse, and Jesse was the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Solomon was the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the father of Abijah. Abijah, the father of Asa. Asa was the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, the father of Joram. Joram, the father of Azariah. Azariah was the father of Jotham. Jotham, the father of Ahaz. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was the father of Manasseh. Manasseh, the father of Amon, Amon, the father of Josiah, and Josiah was the father of Jeconiah and his brothers. Then the deportation to Babylon took place. After the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shealtiel, Shealtiel, the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the father of Abud. Abud, the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Azur. Azur was the father of Zadok. Zadok, the father of Akim. Akim, the father of Eliud. Eliud was the father of Eleazar. Eleazar, the father of Mathan. And Mathan, the father of Jacob. And Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of her was born Jesus, who is called Christ. The sum of generations is therefore 14 from Abraham to David, 14 from David to Babylonian deportation, and 14 from the Babylonian deportation to Christ. Sisters and brothers, the good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, you heard uh, passage from the Gospel of Matthew, the beginning of the Gospel, chapter 1. And on, in this, we had the genealogy of Jesus Christ. If I remember well, last year I had the same passage of the Gospel. And uh, it's very easy to skip the homily today. Remember what I said last year. I don't think many of you will be remembering that. Anyway, I'm not going to say the same thing. I, when I went through this uh, little missalette, Sambuhai missalette, and there you have Celia Hugh Tadeo is giving a very good reflection on that. I hope all of you have read that. It's aiming at renewing everything in Jesus Christ. So when we heard the genealogy of Jesus Christ, 
as it happens to all of us, including me, when we read something that is not very interesting, slightly boring, we turn the page, we skip. We don't feel much interest in that. But then, let us remember, a big treasure is hidden in this passage. Like the treasure hidden in the field, the man goes and sells all that he has and buys that plot because he knows there is a treasure hidden and he takes possession of the treasure hidden there. There is a treasure hidden in the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the family tree of Jesus Christ. To understand this family tree, according to Matthew, we need to know two other genealogies mentioned in the Gospels. We have four Gospels. Mark does not have a genealogy of his own. We don't have to go into that. Why? But then Luke has a genealogy. In chapter 3 of St. Luke's Gospel, Luke takes the reverse order. Here you have Abraham and he comes down to Jesus, father to son. Luke has a reverse order. He goes from son to the father. Starts with Jesus, son of Joseph. Joseph was um, the son of so and so. It goes on like that. And Luke goes up to Adam. He does not stop at Abraham. And when we go to St. John's Gospel, there is no per se genealogy, but John speaks of the origin of Jesus from all eternity. In the beginning was Word, the first chapter of John. The Word was with God, and Word was God. Through him everything was created, nothing was created without him, because in him was life. So this is how the three Gospels place Jesus before us. Matthew has a special purpose. He was pre preaching to the Jews, the Abrahamic people. And therefore he starts with Abraham coming down to Jesus to prove that Jesus was the son of Abraham, son of David. And Luke was preaching to the entire universe the entire world, therefore, he says, he is speaking to the pagans as well. Uh, therefore, Jesus comes down from Adam. John was more theological, therefore, he goes, takes Jesus back to his eternal origin from God the Father. So all these things should be in our mind when we read this genealogy according to Matthew, then we will surely discover the great treasure hidden there. And what is that treasure hidden in the genealogy of Jesus? I invite your attention to the Annunciation scene. Jesus is summarily described in the Annunciation. Luke chapter 1, when he speaks about the, the birth of Jesus, says, In the sixth month, angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to Joseph, an ancestor of David. And then the angel greets Mary. Hail, favored one. The angel of God, in the name of God, angel is greeting Mary, hail. Hail was a symbol of domination, not by the one who says, to the one to whom it is said. You are all familiar with how people used to say, Heil Hitler, means they acknowledge the dominance of Hitler, the power of Hitler. 
So here the angel is acknowledging the power of Mary. Hail, full of grace. Hail, the favored one. Naturally, Mary was troubled, perplexed, and the angel calms her down. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will bear a son and call his name Jesus. He will be the son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will rule over Jacob forever. His kingdom will have no end. This summarizes that Jesus was someone who was foretold by the prophets. If Jesus has to be a Messiah, fulfilling the prophecies of old, he needs to be two things. One is, he has to be virgin born. That was the prophecy of, the, of Isaiah, very specially. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son. He should be virgin born. And secondly, he should be an ancestor of David. Means he should have a bloodline from David. A natural descendant of David. How can this be? This is the greatest mystery here. If he is virgin born, Joseph is not his natural father. He is the legal father. And then something is missing there. The natural descend from David. Therefore, how can Jesus claim to be the Messiah? This is the question. So the, the question is solved by a simple thing called those days. They used to marry from the same tribe. Joseph, Mary was betrothed to Joseph. It means Mary and Joseph belong to the same tribe. And that means Mary also is a descendant of David. If Joseph is a descendant of uh, David. So that's how we understand that the blood relationship to David comes through Mary, who was also a descendant of David. Therefore, Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophecies. He is virgin born and he is a descendant of David. Therefore, he has all the claims to be the Messiah. So that's what Matthew is trying to tell to his Jewish audience. Here is the Messiah. He is son of a virgin. He is son of David and therefore son of Abraham and according to Luke, son of Adam and son of God according to John. So bear in mind all these things and read this passage then you discover the, the great treasure that is hidden there. Angel Gabriel was sent to a town in Galilee called Nazareth. Okay, that was a very small town unknown, insignificant town. This is God's way. God chooses the humble in order to raise them up to the skies. That is God's way. So when you go through the genealogy of Jesus, you will find that there are saints and hardcore sinners there. Jesus or God is not ashamed of all these people. He is not too proud about the good people that are found there, the holy people that are found there like Abraham and Jacob and so on. And there are also very hardcore sinners there. That's how human life is made up of. Human life has all these elements. Holiness and sinfulness, they mingle together and from among that God brings out the, the gem of the redemption of the people. Our redemption was brought about like that. So Jesus himself 
empties himself, becomes a small man, humbles himself and becomes one like us. And through his act of self-emptying, he redeems us. This is how God acts in us. And this mystery is being revealed through this genealogy of uh, Matthew. And there you find that God takes pride in, in the sinners, which is a kind of great encouragement for all of us. For all of us are sinners. And God is not ashamed of us. He makes us part of his salvation history. He makes us part of everything that he will shower on this world, especially his love. He will make us share in his love. This is the great message that comes from this great genealogy of St. Matthew, which we just now heard. And how does it apply to us? Through this genealogy, we are told that God is renewing us, making us new. By our sin, we are being tarnished. We are in darkness. We are not uh, worth looking at even because of the ugliness that has come into us because of the, the sinfulness that is in us. The ugly face of sin is wiped off and made bright, made beautiful, handsome by the grace that comes to us through Jesus Christ, the redemptive grace that comes to us through Jesus Christ. So that's what we need to take from this gospel passage, that we need to offer ourselves into the hands of Jesus to be renewed because we are sinners and Jesus is not ashamed of us. Sinners that we are, he will surely embrace us, embrace us and make us whole by his embrace of love. That's what Jesus has come down to give us. And that embrace must be received. I'm sure all of you Filipinos, you have, you are, according to my vision, you are temperamentally Christian before you became Christian. It's called something called a pre-Christian. When I became 60 years old, my mother told me, go and get tested, go to a doctor, okay, about your health and so on. She was insisting much before, at 60, when I completed 60, I said, okay, better to listen to my mother, okay, went. Then the doctor told me, you are pre-diabetic, which means what? You are on the way to become diabetic. Very soon you will become one. So you have all the qualities of a diabetic uh, patient and if you are not very careful, pre-diabetic will become diabetic. And this is what I mean, you are already pre-Christian. Before the Spanish missionaries came to Philippines, you were already temperamentally Christian and therefore it was easy for them to make you Christians, and you easily accepted that. Uh, this was not possible in my own country in India. We were not pre-Christians. We were not temperamentally Christians. In spite of the fact, 600 years, uh, European missionaries were present there. Only when they left, less than 2% were Christians. So faith started with St. Thomas, the apostle. Means that temperament to receive the redemption, the joy of Jesus Christ was not there. So why I say you Filipinos are temperamentally Christian because you have that exuberance in you, that joy in you. Jesus has come into this world with what? Joy to the world. That's how he has come. Our famous Christmas song is that, joy to the world. As the Redeemer has come. So you already have that spirit of joy, that exuberance in you. And because of that, 
The message of Jesus goes straight into your heart and then you easily accept that. This position is already there. So that is the beauty of that. When you meet a Filipino man or a woman, he or she says, Father, I have a headache. But oh, okay, I'll go. <laughs> I will be okay. Another one says, I have fever. But oh, okay, I'll go. It goes on like that. A third one says, Father, I am diagnosed with cancer. But oh, okay, I'll go. Okay. This is the normal sentiment of every Filipino. I will be all right in spite of all these things. But when I am hungry, mamatay na ako sa gutom dito. When I am hungry, I will die here. Okay. That's a small weakness. <laughs> But it is not a moral weakness. If you are all perfect, then you will be as holy as the Heavenly Father. And you will be very proud people. So therefore God has given you this small weakness that is hunger. So. Wherever you go, you eat and celebrate. But in all other things, it is pero okay. That is your temperament. That's what I say, temperamentally Christian. You are temperamentally Christian, therefore you have that inner disposition. to receive great things that come to your life, real great things. And the greatest of all things that have come down to us is the grace of Jesus Christ, the gift of Jesus Christ. When he came through the missionary activities of the, the Spanish missionaries, you received it wholeheartedly. Therefore, the almost the entire Philippines, maybe 90% became Christian. And that's a miracle that happened in the Philippines. And that miracle continues. The way you celebrate the different uh, mysteries of our religion, be it Christological mysteries, be it Marian mysteries, everything you celebrate it with all your heart. The body, mind, soul, everything is involved in that. And you always see to perfection, even in decorating everywhere. Whatever you do, you are always people who see to the minutest details and then all. All these details put together create a great beauty. That I have noticed. So I have to appreciate that. What happens in Dubai? I'm sure it happens all over the world because that is inbuilt in you. You have received it into your DNA. This kind of putting your whole heart and soul into whatever you undertake. So that's what is required right now. You are preparing to receive Jesus Christ. 
Don't be just be satisfied with nine days celebration. Allow Jesus to touch you. Let some transformation take place in you. The other day, I saw a little video clip from Brother Mike. And that I saw that a Filipina girl received a COVID vaccine. She received COVID vaccine and she started talking in Chinese. <laughs> a big transformation. Transformation takes place. Okay, this is uh, true or not. When we receive Jesus, who is the real vaccine? The body and blood of Jesus Christ we receive, that is a great vaccine. The word of God about Jesus we listen, that is a vaccine. And this vaccine should create us to speak the language of Jesus. And when we speak the language of Jesus, we act like Jesus, we behave like Jesus, transformation takes place. So that's what should happen to all of us here. Just do not celebrate Simbangabi and go home. You should be touched by Jesus. You should be touched by Jesus. It's a craze uh, among people you know, to, to be acquainted with celebrities. Be it uh, Tom Cruise or Brad Pitt, Jennifer Lopez or Angelina Jolie. Oh, I know, I spoke with her. I ate in the same restaurant and so on. People begin to boast. So somebody was boasting when I traveled by flight. I was in the first class and then on my next seat, lo and behold, who is there? Jennifer Lopez sitting near me. Oh, so I looked at her, she looked at me and there was a nod, nod of high sis, high bro. Yes, <laughs> with that it, afterwards we never talked. We did not look, look at each other. He came away, the people said, wow, what a fellow you are. You should have taken a selfie with her. <laughs> no, I did not, I did not have the courage to do that. So I may be sued in the court. At least you could have asked for an autograph. I did not ask for an autograph because she did not ask my autograph. <laughs> uh, so it ended like that. So it should not be like that when you celebrate uh, Zimbangabhi, you are celebrating it with the greatest of all celebrities, Jesus Christ. Don't finish it with a nod of hi bro Jesus, no. You're all, all Filipinos are very good at self taking selfies. Okay, take a selfie with Jesus every day. And what is the meaning of that selfie? You are putting yourself together with Jesus in the same picture. You cannot deny that I was not visited by Jesus. You cannot deny that I was not acquainted with Jesus. Yes, that is the selfie I mean. Put yourself in the same picture with Jesus and look at it and get transformed by this great celebrity who is with you. During the Sibangabi, he's with you, and on Christmas Day, he 